Okay. So we, I like to welcome everyone for this webinar. So first of all, good evening to all the audience, and I hope you all are everyone is fit and fine. A very short introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Megha Mala, and I am working here in the marketing team in Arity. I will be the moderator and host of this webinar. I am having with me Ms. Aparna. She is my colleague from marketing team as well as co-host of this webinar. Uh, we have also with us Mr. Ankit Tukas. He is the founder of EasyCND and IIT, which is a full-stack integrated sales and marketing automation platform for the B2B small and medium enterprise brands. Aparna? Uh, hi, uh, good evening everyone. Looking forward to today's webinar. Welcome to our ninth live webinar. It is the topic, the topic name is Stages of Customer Journeys in Unified Digital Marketing. And coming to a very small introduction about our company, Adity, it's a unified marketing automation platform for the B2B business team. So our parent company is Data AG Software Private Limited, which is a Bangalore-based company which started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS products, mainly EasySendy and RIT. EasySendy is focused on SME and SMB business and RIT is focused on customers from mid-enterprise and enterprise. Around 2K plus companies across globe are using RIT and EasySendy product platform. And from this year mainly, we are getting into deep in India and Asia market. Okay, so now coming to today's webinar, that is Aritic Live. So we are trying to bring professionals close to Aritic platform with our Aritic Live. It is an online talk show for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders, and working professionals. The talk show include webinar, on-demand webcast, podcast, and live event from Aritic and partner networks. Sorry, uh, I guess we all know that uh, things are getting into normal after the pandemic. So during this pandemic, consumers have developed new skills and habits due to the disruption of they happened in this time. Now, they are expecting innovative and also a best in class interaction in digital and hybrid channels in addition to become digital first. As a result, they have more freedom, consciousness, this comment and purpose. Also, we can tell as a brand, several factors might increase complexity as you manage your customer journey, whether they are infrequent users or devoted client. We all know that because your client want to connect with your brand through various channels and devices, developing successful strategies, detailed client profiles, generating segments, Examining customers' online behavior and also implementing suitable campaigns may frequently become overwhelming. So we can break down an overall user experience into five stages, as we all know, uh, on basis of how consumer feel, think, and behave over their whole customer life cycle. Therefore, we may concentrate and address particular opportunities and obstacles along the buyer's journey by understanding and segmenting client behavior depending on these various stages. When we talk about customer journey, we should also know or remember about customer journey mapping. It is the process of creating a visual story of your customer's interaction with your brand. This exercise helps us, the marketers, to step into customer's shoes and see our brand from the customer's perspective. To dive deeply into today's discussion, we develop this new analytic live webinar, Stages of Customer's Journey in 25 Digital Marketing. So, uh, before starting the discussion, I would like to tell all of my audience that, as you know, Aritic is a unified marketing automation platform for B2B and D2C business. If you are interested for discovery call, here is the link to schedule your demo with our expert. So, other than that, we are also open for our next webinar registration, which is on 14th of July. The topic of the webinar is financial goal setting and measurement for B2B marketers. Registration link is again given in the chat box. 
Now, here I really like to thank you, three of our speaker, Biraja, Sonesh, and Kavita, for coming to this webinar as a guest speaker for in a, just a one day notice period, because two of our speakers certainly, uh, unfortunately, cannot be able to join. So I approach them and I am really thankful to them. So thank you, Mr. Shones, Kavita, and Viraja for saying yes to this opportunity for this webinar in such a short period of time. Thanks, guys. Okay. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks always, Nika. So, Okay, so now uh, I would like to take this, this discussion forward. So I want to introduce all of our esteemed speakers who are there with us. So our first speaker will be Sonesh Prakash, CEO, CMO, Outsourced. So Sonesh works with B2B SaaS startups and SMEs as a virtual CMO with a special focus on content marketing for generating top of the funnel leads. He has more than 15 years of experience across sales and marketing for B2B companies. Over to you, Sunesh. If you want to add anything and I have missed out something, please go ahead. Well, thanks. I think uh, that was a uh, nice introduction. So, I, hi, guys. Uh, my, I'm Sunesh Prakash and I work as a virtual CMO for B2B SaaS companies. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I would be looking forward to sharing some insights around customer journey more in the B2B space. And, uh, yeah, so looking forward to connect with you all. Okay, so thank you, Sonish. And my next speaker is Kavita Gumasta, brand strategist and marketing communication specialist. So she is an ardent marketer with 10 plus years of rich experience with Marcom and B2B marketing. She is a passionate orator, communicator with chill and taste, humor with a vivid imagination, obsessed with writing and weaving stories. Few of our primary skill sets are strategic thinker, communicator, content marketing, social media management, marketing communication, and campaign management. As per her, communication is a key to success all of us. She uses different forms of marketing such as blogs, tech and non-tech, case strategists, white paper, scripts, etc. by using them as a canvas for stories. Apart from this, she also loves to be a people's people loves interacting and learning from others with every extent of conversation. She is glad to be a passionate marketer. Over to Kavita, if you add any other point. Oh, I think that was uh, just way too much, but thanks a lot. I really feel overwhelmed and uh, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, I think um, this is, I, I think whatever you covered, Mega was was uh, apt and yeah, let's let's look forward for us beginning this very important discussion because I believe this is yes. an interesting topic. Yes. Okay. So next speaker with us is Biraja Swan, Growth Consultant, BS Consultant. So a digital native come evangelist with over 30 global and domestic awards for innovative media work, master's degree in marketing and over 18 plus years of uh, professional experience, significant experience. leading, uh, monitoring and scaling team and in setting a vision for our companies. Prior to this, he was building a global digital performance agency in stealth mode. Earlier to this, he was the chief growth and innovation officer, head of COE at Neo Ogilvy India. Today, Biraja is a well-recognized member of the digital and advertising community in India and active uh, contributor to the knowledge base of the industry. Besides being passionate about digital media, he is a firm believer in the power of blockchain and the green movement. He is an avid blogger and lives in the heart of Bangalore with his wife, son and a golden retriever. Over to you, Biraja, if you want to add anything, please go ahead. Uh, Biraja, you are on mute. Thanks, Aparna. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, pleasure to be here again. And uh, yeah, that's too much of me. So I would just shut up and just listen to everybody else. Thank you, Viraja. And now my next speaker is Namrata Kashyap, Manager, Product Marketing, Norfloats. So Namrata Kashyap is a leading product marketer in Norfloats, a 
funded venture which helps in taking small and medium Indian businesses online. She has previously worked with e-commerce companies like Quicker and Firstfly and has worked closely with PPDI, a Bangalore-based emerging edtech startup. She has been published in various reputed publications like Relevance and Track. She has a keen interest in digital marketing and loves to share her knowledge and experience via different channels. Namrata, would you like to add something from your end? I think you are in mute. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, I'm really thankful to be here and really overwhelmed. That's that's yeah, that's me. Hi everybody, and looking forward to have a very knowledgeable and informative discussion over here. Thank you. To Namrata. Okay. Thank you, Nandita. So the last speaker for today is Divyani Saxena, Product Manager, Simple. So Divyani is a Product Manager at Simple, uh, and Simple is a fintech startup solving buy now, pay later for 15,000 brands in India, including Zomato, Geomart, Big Basket, and Make My Trip. Divyani has been working at Simple for four years now, and she specializes in curating user lifecycle engagement and retention. She is also an active member of professional communities like Product Folks and GrowthX. Her team was ranked second on GrowthX Demo Day. Over to you, Devani, if you want to add anything. Thanks, Aparna. I think that uh, is sufficient. <laughs> and uh, thanks for inviting me, Aparna and Mega. Yeah, sure. We are looking forward today. We are looking forward to it. And I hope that uh, we all are going to exchange a lot of ideas. Okay, so before starting the discussion, I would request all of my audience to put your question in chat so that we can discuss it within the discussion going on. Over to you, Mega. So uh, now uh, we're starting the can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I just wanted to know from the audience that if uh, the audience have done any customer's journey from their organization or not, so you can put your answer in the chat box. Yeah, so the whole point of this uh, webinar, Aretic Live, is let's make it more interactive. So why not let's uh, yes. chat in chat box. Uh, even our panel members are here to discuss, even they want to share their ideas. So I would really appreciate if all of our audience members can share their ideas and put their question and also their experience regarding the topic in the chat box. Uh, yeah, we will we'll really appreciate that. Yes, please if your participants can mention which domain they work in, maybe marketing, B2B, B2C, uh, product, tech, that will be helpful to understand the mix of crowd, like the mix of people we have here. Yes, yeah. absolutely right. Okay, so uh, for now, I am really sorry because some network problem is going on, so I have to switch off my video right here. Otherwise, it is like sound problem is happening. So now we can start our discussion part with our panel members. So my very first question to all of our panel members is like, what are the different stages of customer journey we are having and how to correctly set up the customer's journey funnel? I will request Shonesh to start the discussion. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, so uh, see, uh, customer journey, and I will give uh, you know my insights from B two B perspective because that's an area which I come from. So uh, you know, for B two B, as uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, as you would know that you know, typically it's characterized by large, uh, longer sales cycles, and uh, multiple people uh, you know in a company with uh, you know higher tic uh, revenue ticket size per client. So uh, the customer journey from that perspective will typically be, you know, uh, uh, mostly divided into three categories. I mean, three, in fact, three to four categories, you could say. Mm -hmm. One is, uh, you know, creating awareness uh, when the person needs to be aware about uh, uh, your, uh, you know, uh, uh, product or uh, this thing through 
uh, uh, once he is aware, made aware of uh, the product or uh, you know the service which you are offering, then then uh, uh, is he really interested in considering it? You know. Uh, uh, yes. to, uh, uh, to buy it or so uh, and uh, once he is interested in considering it, is he interested in making a decision to buy and then again these awareness to consideration decision will probably take a three to six months or a year depending on the kind of enterprise sale which you are making and uh, uh, and then in the end once he is a customer can he be an advocate you know for you as well so oh, that is the post acquisition uh, you know uh, 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 journey as well so then in these four stages how is it that uh, uh, it's about uh, you know uh, in including your content marketing strategy in place is what typically defines it, and that's where uh, you have solutions uh, you know uh, various solutions these days including the like of Arctic, which help you in defining uh, the you know uh, customer journey uh, automation in place uh, based on the uh, overall journey. So typically at the awareness stage, what kind of content, what kind of channels which you will be using, so and so forth. So yeah, in, in brief, this is how uh, I would define it. I won't really get into details of it because I think there are other people also who share perspectives. But this is in brief from uh, my perspective. Uh, thank you, Shonesh. Uh, I would like to request Namrata to express her view on this topic. Uh, yeah, so Vikala, actually, I would like to talk more towards B2C or e-commerce okay. sector. So when when we when we work on customer journey mapping for any e-commerce, let's say, or for any B2C or any ed tech market. So at that time, basically we divide, we try to divide it into five parts. Wherein the first part itself is the trigger part, wherein even the customer doesn't know that they are in the need of this product, wherein we try to inbuilt, wherein we try to put this need in the feed of the customer. The second stage is the awareness stage wherein we wherein customer is actually looking they have the need but they do not know what they are looking for so we try to give a complete information about the product and try to solve the problem that they are facing then the part comes is the consideration wherein obviously the customer is aware about their problem and aware about what they actually need but they are doing their kind of research and uh, you know looking for product and it's a very important uh, stage in a customer journey mapping because we, here in you have to compete with your competitors wherein a yes. lot of people are providing the same kind of product and again after consideration the mm -hmm. next stage comes is the final purchase uh, stage wherein the customer decides to go with you and uh, you know apart from all the competitors who are providing the same kind of product you stand out and you kind of build a loyalty for your customers and then they go with you after you know um, for B any b2c market the customer journey doesn't stop it, it doesn't stop till the purchase point we go ahead with retention and then we go ahead with advocate wherein we try to you know collect referral or try to collect mouth uh, you know mouth, word mouth from other other customer or to get other customers so that's how we divide the complete stage okay five stages thank you namrata uh, you said correctly for the uh, now i will be requesting divyani for her point of view in this topic yeah so i think very well defined by sumanshu namrata both from b2b mm -hmm. and b2c um, yes i'll define it from a b2c perspective uh, mm -hmm. and more of a perspective where you know on a the frequency of usage is higher for products like simple whether usage is five to six times a month or zomato or swiggy where customers are buying more frequently so here the stages are divided into awareness acquisition onboarding engagement and then retention so awareness is of course you are trying to reach out to uh, your top of the funnel like you know as many people as you can uh, in the relevant geographies in the relevant customer behavioral segments so making them aware that this brand exists and this solves a particular pain point for the customers then you then you move towards the acquisition stage where you're nudging them through different channels we're trying to reach out to them to say different paid media ads or through your partnered integrations like for example we are integrated with different brands so we will focus on our branding how are we showcasing our uh, usps on that platform or reaching out to paid media channels like google affiliates paid media on instagram facebook uh, and making sure the users uh, are, are, are you know feel mm. the need to click on the ad and you know go through mm. and read through it 
So that's the read through rates that we track. Then, then after acquisition, then comes the onboarding. When the user experiences, like for example, installs your app or goes to your website, what will be those touch points? How do you address to your user in the first, second, and third touch point? Those are the onboarding. Then come then comes the engagement when the user has started using your product. So what will be that user life cycle journey when the user starts using your product? How do you nurture them in the first 30 days so that your retention in the upcoming months is very high? So you identify uh -huh. some key milestones that the user should do in the first 30 days uh, so as the user understands the complete value of your product. And then comes the retention when the user keeps on you know, engaging with your product how can you increase the user's engagement horizontally across your products and also yes. vertically in the depth of their, what, you're, what they're using, increase the frequency probably. So this is how uh, we divide the user life cycle. Thank you, uh, Divyani. Viraja, uh, you want to share your point of view? Yeah. Well, I have a completely different point of view. Um, okay. so let me just throw the spanner in the works. So in a, uh, in a traditional world, if you go back 15, 20 years, I think the, the funnel uh, or the marketing funnel actually made sense. Today, there is no concept of a funnel. The reason being, you have multiple touch points for the customer. The customer goes across multiple touch points multiple times before making a purchase decision. And the only thing that affects it is how knowledgeable is the product buy. So there is a difference between when you're buying a car and you're buying a Pepsi, right? So when you're buying a Pepsi, you straight away see, you go to say, for example, a big basket, you search for a Pepsi, you don't get it. You would buy a Coke and then get out, right? There is, there is no, you're buying straight away from an intent to an action and you're finishing that whole funnel, right? But for a B2B SaaS product, right? And I work with a large FinTech client um, uh, globally. Um, so a deal cycle, as Sonesh said, is around between nine to 12 months. Between nine to 12 months, they meet the sales team at least beyond the RFP at least 20 to 25 times, right? And they would ask information, they would ask white papers, they would ask case studies. So going back and forth through the traditional sense of a funnel in that whole buying process, right? So today yeah. with, the, with the touch points and any given purchase decision of a knowledgeable product like a car, for example, you will take six months to go and decide a car and that's the average time period to buy the car. So you would go to a dealer, you would go and check out a blog on bhp the team bhp.com, check out the reviews of this particular car and how owners have perceived it. Again, go back to the dealer, check out a deal, or most probably talk to the sales guy, you know, in terms of taking a demo drive and everything else. So it's sort of a flywheel kind of method rather than a linear kind of method. So we don't have the linear funnel as a sense right now. Mm -hmm. So we have multiple touch points. We have multiple decision making or moments of truth as we call it. And then tot in totality that drives you to the purchase. And the idea of for us, all of us marketers, whether in the B2B or the B2C concept, is to be there across all the moment of truth or the points where the customer touch points um, with the brand, right? And you know, yes. you could you could classify that across all the three stages of the funnel, but it doesn't happen mm -hmm. linearly. It happens in in you know, an always on kind of method across you know whatever categories you're talking to. And the only sense I said is how knowledgeable the buy is. If it is higher knowledgeable product then you obviously have a longer duration and a more and more um, daily dialing between the three stages of the funnel. And if you have a very quick, less knowledgeable buy product like a you know Pepsi or a Coke, you would basically go straight away from intent to the purchase and finish. Thank you, Viraja. I will directly go to my next question because of time constraint. So my next question will be starting with Kavita. I wanted to ask Kavita, when we are talking about customer journey, nowadays marketing automation is also in use in all, maximum of the organizations. Just wanted to know from Kavita, starting from Kavita, why do marketing, how and why do marketing automation and customer journeys go to, together? Uh, 
see, I believe, uh, you know, this answer can be summed up in one line or it can be even summed up in thousand lines or maybe I think we can even have books written on this. Now, uh, yes. you know, as we all know, right, why marketing automation is important and why, yeah. um, you know, customer uh, relationship, if I have to say, or if I have to say, uh, you know, so for example, as uh, one of our, uh, you know, esteemed members, Mr. Uh, Bija, you know, uh, Biraja, he just mentioned, right, that nowadays there is no marketing funnel 15 or 20 years back when we would work it was corporate communications now it has turned into marcom in the same way there would be around six to seven or two maybe you know eight different stages of customer acquisition as also you know summed up by namrita devyani and sonesh before as to yes. the entire journey yeah. of having, you know, the proper CTAs and then, uh, you know, expecting the customer and then nurturing the lead and then, you know, demand gen, etc., etc., followed by your, you know, MQLs mm -hmm. and SQLs and etc. I yeah. believe uh, marketing automation plays a very, very important role. Mm -hmm. Precisely, you know, if I have to sum this up in just two uh, sentences. A is, um, see, uh, according to me, I believe that uh, it eliminates a lot of redundant channels or processes which may not be suitable for a B2B, for example, if something is being, uh, you know, observed or if something of the steps can be covered for B2C, right? Yes. All those other steps cannot be covered for B2B, obviously, because the sector and the domains are different. And the kind of audience and the engagement and the interaction, the tools, platforms, etc. is also different, right? So, uh, yeah. So obviously for all these things, you know, it also eliminates, uh, you know, the kind of redundant or the kind of um, not so important uh, steps or the flow or the processes needed. Also, it gives a lot of time to the backend team. Now, for example, if the marketing team is the backend team and the sales people become the front runners for an organization, mm -hmm. right, it gives them a very, very... Um, you know, it gives them a huge time for understanding to create some strategies and for the salespeople to focus on the sales process. So now mm -hmm. when I talk about your sales process, obviously mm -hmm. it starts from MQL and then it gets converted into SQLs. I mean, this is what it happens in, in the B2B uh, space, you know. So oh. I believe that is also one thing which is important and more uh, most important is I think uh, one thing that I would want to highlight is the, um, if I have to say, um, uh, how do I say the uh, identifying uh, the in-depth picture of a potential customer or of a prospect that helps a lot when you have the right marketing automation tool or a platform for the right set of customers. So I believe yeah, marketing automation definitely helps a lot uh, for a detailed uh, customer or for a journey or, or for a user experience for that matter. Correctly uh said. Correctly. Thank you, uh, Kavita, for such a nice explanation. I would like to directly go to Sanish for his point of view. Yeah, uh, so I would suggest that I think we can, uh, you know, move to the next question because I guess it, the answers will probably end up being more or less the same. So I think in the interest okay. of time, I would really suggest that you have perspectives from maximum maybe two people and then move to the other that's, question because you know okay, that's, gets, yeah. that's perfectly okay so uh namrata divyani viraja anyone wants to um, ex um, keep the point of view from your side for this question well i, I just add I, to kavita sorry uh, namrata you go ahead uh yeah so i was just saying that uh, mm -hmm. i think i agree with sonish uh, Kavita has well explained the point about funnel and marketing automation and how it's uh, how the things are changing and how it's important. So yeah, we can move to the next question. Oh, uh, no, Viraja? No, I just wanted to just simplify what Kavita just said, you know. Yes, please. It's about, you know, when um, marketing automation used to happen earlier, but it used to be manual, right? We used to do that manually. So uh, we even, uh, you know, say email order, postal orders, and everything used to come out, right? You know catalogs used to be sent to customers at the middle of the season and so on and so forth. Today, there are multiple moments of truth, as I was saying earlier, right? And it happens each and every time on a real-time basis. And we cannot keep up. And we need something as a tool which can basically say, okay, I have an abundant card. Let me show out a mail with a 10% discount coupon saying that that's applicable right now. If you convert in the next one hour, that's yours, right? With a 10% off, right? And that automates, automation happens because you set up a tool in a particular trigger Kind of action saying if i have a customer at this particular moment of truth please do this kind of action 
and that's not physically possible manually to do it and that's where mm-hmm. automation has come in it's all about getting to occupy and monitor this different movements of truth as it happens right now both in b2c and b2b and sort of be with the customer there and do interventions which can help us complete that sale as simple as that oh the venue your point of view on this topic yeah i think yeah so marketing automation just streamlines all that you want to do and uh, improves the time to reach to the customer so just eliminates all the operational operational activities creation of templates segmentation is like segmentation is boosted by marketing automation you can just with a combination of few logics you can reach you know identify a right set of people so i think it just streamlines and boosts your time to reach out to the customers and your conversion goal thank you devani apna over to you okay uh so my next question uh, directly i will go to my next question again because of the time constraint so i would like to know from our panel member ki what is actually the customer journey orchestration and how if you can we can we will be able to know ki what are the some use cases or examples of it kavita can you start with this one hello kavita yes sorry i was just uh, yeah. browsing between windows sorry yeah uh, see when it comes to journey orchestration right uh, mm-hmm. i believe uh, the best example for us is um, our pre pandemic and post pandemic you know the way yeah. our brands have started communicating with the users because for example now since we have a female dominating thing here so maybe if i can uh, you know just go ahead and start talking about zivame clovia or obviously starbucks i think which we all you know run up to as the first one stop coffee shop see i think these brands have changed a lot with their uh, user journey with their kind of connecting with the users mm-hmm. i think more or less i think they have uh, uh, moved a lot uh, not only just from creating loyalty programs but also okay. in understanding and keeping a track obviously thanks to the data and the data analytics and obviously some of the you know marketing automation platforms which could give them into a in depth uh, detail as i said earlier right about what the customer is and the yes. customer orientation or the prospect right so i think yeah. they have become very very good when it comes to a personal connect or making the brand more personalized for the user right as the brand evolves you know so the user also grows with it so for example initially you know there was a lot of um, if i have to say if i look at the stats i think pre pandemic uh, we had around 43 to 49% of users engaging with the brands you know not uh, uh, you know um, without a personal touch or something of that sort but i think post pandemic now the journey has changed and 72% of the consumers now engage with the brands only and only when they know it's personalized or it's done so all these stats i i have it so i was just looking at some reports and that is how i'm talking with uh, with stats here um and mm-hmm. i believe uh, journey orchestration of a user right now is very very important because it is a digital era though you are offline presence though you have an online presence right but i believe a uh, a strong demand for having a presence in terms of digital transformation that's that's very very important because yes. the consumers attitudes behaviors personas um the kind of tools they use or the kind of choices right they have changed mm-hmm. drastically so it's it's not the same what i would like 5 uh, days before or you know what i would like 5 years before so that's okay. that's also changed and uh, what happens is people have started becoming a lot more online addictive rather than compared to going to a biba or a w just to check the size and then knowing you know if this can be delivered right. to our place through something else or if i am not getting something in uh, mintra i can definitely go to naika and maybe buy something because for me for all of us here going to the store is no longer very important 
Yes, that's what's important, true. right? And the most important part at, at the last, I would conclude saying that there's a lot of a personal expectation that you get. So, for example, you know, if you become into one of those elite club members, then you start yes. having your coupon or your discounts. You know, for example, if it's if it's you, so you know, it could be you know, use my coupon code that's MEG fifty percent and start using it. And obviously, with your one purchase, there are other ten people that you might refer to, and you know, you might also get some uh, discounts there, leverages there, and obviously then. you know those small small thank you notes your small reminders on your birthday some things you know that becomes very personalized as a kind of token or a gift on every purchase especially what zivame clovia or you know other brands do i think that also makes a huge difference so i think yeah digital transformation uh, the need for buying or doing everything online and uh, the most important uh, thing is your uh, you know using one channel or maybe omni channel the customers mm-hmm. behavior and the personalized expectations i believe have have made the table stone rightly said kavita i would like to go directly to devyani for her point of view in this topic yeah again i think kavita you have uh, explained it very well with news cases so joint mm-hmm. orchestration uh, with my opinion very uh, like vibes with what kavita said it's about understanding what the customer would like at this moment yes. not with respect to what the marketer feels that the customer would like because was yes. because what marketer evaluates is based on the past behavior maybe that behavior could be 10 days past 20 days past 30 days past so instead of that marketer should use real time information and and that's where uh, you know having one view of a customer across the life cycle helps and that's what orchestration means that understanding which part of the you know product life is the customer sitting at and nudging the customer to just take an action immediately so using real time data and trigger campaigns really helps in this and this has boosted uh, the content the design and other things that support marketing campaigns i think uh, orchestration is the way to go for for the current campaigns and reaching out to the customers thank you divyani and namrata i would like to request you to express your point of view on this yes yeah, so uh, talking about this i think uh, that the, it's a different kind of marketing is emerging right now or has emerged right now uh, i can term it as uh, just for me marketing the kind of marketing that yeah the kind of marketing that somato is doing or sukhi is doing mm-hmm. or some other companies like kavita said well like zivabe so all these companies are not only providing the needs at the time we need it but also uh, generating the needs uh, in us so it's a just for me marketing that is done, getting done by a lot of companies and if we are not understanding the customer behavior as as uh, the piani said very well like if you are not understanding the customer's behavior in real time we are definitely going to miss out so managing uh, real time data and uh, you know putting this uh, putting this along with our content and campaigns is the only thing that can make us uh, our acquisition plus retention yes. in days in today's day yeah okay Thank you, Namrata. Uh, Biraja, I would like to request uh, to express your point of view on this topic. What is? Vega, Vega, I have nothing to add. I think my esteemed colleagues have all answered the question pretty much well. Understood. Understood. I think Shonesh, you, if you have some. Yeah, yeah. So I will just have quickly one thing to add. See, from a B two B perspective, uh, one mm-hmm. of the interesting things, and in if I could put one thing, which is a kind of a revolutionized journey orchestration B two B space, is the is the metric of lead scoring. Okay. Okay. So lead scoring, uh, I, it's it's relevant for B two C as well, but B two B especially because I need to understand, I I get to understand a lot about a customer's behavior by looking at his uh, you know lead score, right? So if I if I have hundred customers, yes. yeah, it, and with B two B it's more about engagement than volumes, right? Uh, yeah. How is the engagement? How many customers engaging? What is the behavior like? So based on that is what uh, you know I orchestrate my next marketing process, right? so that is that metric mm. is this kind of a gold mine for now in the b2b space uh, to kind of consider uh, you know based on the you know journey of the customer how is interacted with our various products and stuff so i think that's where again uh, uh, while I'm, i'm not plugging here aritic on any other platform but that's where most of these platforms uh, uh, automation platforms are kind of you know really helpful in giving us that scope 
because they i mean these otherwise these schools are very difficult to get uh, because these platforms are different where i you have email would have uh, you know uh, in listing the landing page and so on and so forth and this is where you know leads for really helps in bringing in this out correctly said sonish over to you apna uh, yeah okay so uh, since we are talking about orchestration so i have a question in my head how to choose an orchestration approach that aligns with uh, brand's customer journey so how to choose that uh, namrata if you, uh, i just wanted to start with you if you can share your view Uh, so uh, I think it depends from company to company that how to okay. choose orchestration. So I think uh, uh, the main point could be your customer behavior and how your customer is behaving when they are coming to the website, understanding the customer behavior. So if you have a customer which is more, uh, you know, which is more towards content reading or which is more towards social media, you can have a different kind of journey altogether. You can have a different kind of uh, program altogether. So I think the two main factors that can be that can be the main factor over here is uh, is the kind of acquisition you are looking for, like it will be a direct acquisition, and the kind of retention you are looking for. So uh, yeah, so the, if we if we are able to understand these two factors for any of the company, uh, like what kind of acquisition we need, what kind of customers we are looking for, and how the customers are uh, current customers are behaving right now. that is the way we can find uh, an app to move or app to wait to go ahead with okay okay uh, the vani if you want to add anything or if you have something that you want to share other than what namrata said yeah i think the approach to this life cycle would be um like i'll take i'll take a use case uh, in in investment industry you want to talk about how to so users want to engage with content which says how to do this how to go about doing investment mutual funds or how to find out this they're more interested in how to and once it convinces them on the how to part they go ahead and use your product and engage with it while uh, use case like you know industries like food and grocery it's like take an action right now so immediately you jump to the point and show them the offer show them the uh categories the cuisines so they'll take an action immediately so i think very well uh, mentioned by namrata that depends on the intent what intent you are taking to reach out to the customers and that will decide your approach to this life cycle uh, i think in our traditional world it, it is divided into centralized and a federated approach where centralized you know every all the functions of a of a company uh, take a centralized approach that at what point of time we need to reach out to the customer uh, and and you know achieve which goal while federated is more of like you know you have a defined goal that at this point of time uh, maybe you know uh, x x goal needs to be achieved irrespective of what the central goal is right now so the companies take a centralized or federated approach depending on their current goals okay okay devani so uh, sonesh what is your view in terms of b2b and in terms of automation field where we are working so uh, what is your view on the same uh, can you do you mind uh, repeating the question again uh, i i think i just missed on the question yeah so my question was that how to choose an orchestration approach that aligns with a brand's uh, customer journey yeah so see uh, as an as i said that in the b2b side of things uh, yeah you will need to align based on the buyer journey uh, based okay. on those four five uh, you know stages which i mentioned and uh, uh, based on those uh, based on those stages uh, if he is let's say if in the awareness stage typically okay. from a orchestration standpoint you would want to show him or maybe you know the kind of content or the kind of uh, uh, information you would want to show him would be relevant at that particular stage right i mean uh, in the awareness yeah. stage it could be a white paper uh you know or a ebook or and so on so forth so as he moves on as he engages more with the brand uh you know uh, uh, uh we want to show him a little more involved collateral so let's say he moves to the consideration stage and we show him a case study uh now the, the, the dissemination can happen either through uh, a platform like linkedin which is more b2b centric mm-hmm. or it could be an email uh you know and, and so on and so forth so typically linkedin and email one of the you know more re- relevant uh, b2b friendly channels uh, primarily which is in a way Uh, to some extent, automated uh, by uh, these automation platforms as well. 
uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, from consideration, you move to decision stages where you typically the guy will be evaluating multiple uh, things, multiple vendors, and so on and so forth. And that's where you require, for, you know, uh, product comparisons and, and I mean, it, comparison sheets and so forth. So basically, at every stage, you disseminate collateral uh, which is relevant at that particular stage. And that's where a lead score uh, also helps when you understand, okay, how engaged that person is and what kind of content should you share with him or her. So, um, yeah, broadly, that's that's what I have. Got it. Uh, Biraja, if you want to add anything? No, Aparna. I have nothing to add. I think, you know, everybody has spoken. I think, let's move on to the next question. I think we're short of time. Yeah, um, sure, sure. Please make a go ahead. Thank you. Thank you all panel members. Now, I have one question in my mind also when we are talking about customer journey management. How can we overcome this silo problem in customer journey management? Uh, Shonish, can you start with it? Uh, so, uh, uh, so again, it's a very broad uh, statement uh, when you mm -hmm. say a problem in customer journey management. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, in a way, as I said, that this is where, uh, you know, platforms, uh, marketing automation platforms come in uh, play because that's where, you know, you can orchestrate the entire journey uh, and automate it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, as Biraja also mentioned that, you know, a lot of it was manual in the past when there was no automation and all. And uh, considering that, uh, uh, you know, a, a company, I mean, uh, your uh, prospects are engaging with the brand in various touch points. Even in B2B, they would engage on your website, they would come through SEO, I mean, uh, through a, you know, through searching on uh, certain terms, uh, they could come through a email marketing campaign and so on and so forth. So now we have, with the with the luxury of with, with, with the, the marketing automation tools uh, uh, in place, we actually get information about where the leads are coming from and uh, based on their uh, uh, intent or based on the buying intent or so on and so forth, because let's say a lead coming from SEO will have a little more buying intent than a, a lead coming from an email or so on and so forth, because that guy searched for it. So we can we can actually then uh, you know or, uh, 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 show the right kind of information to them based on their engagement and so on and so forth. So uh, so yeah, so broadly this is uh, where uh, things were not in place. Uh, you know, okay. uh, when we had siloed uh, you know products and uh, stuff. Uh, you know, taking uh, like email marketing will have a different product. Uh, you know, uh, Google. I mean, uh, uh, Google Analytics. So, so I'm saying that that's where a marketing automation mm -hmm. platform brings a holistic perspective. Yeah. Understood. Understood, Shonish. Uh, so while Shonish was explaining this, I was really curious about what, how uh, the customer journey worked for our audience also. So audience, you can comment how it went for you also in the comment box and how many of you got positive ROI. So we will be really looking forward to your comment also. I, now, coming back to the discussion, I would like to ask Viraja to explain the, his point of view in it. Well, uh, so so I think, you know, as, mm -hmm. as Sonesh was just saying, from a larger picture perspective, I think yes. if you go back 10, 15 years, the challenge or the problem was user data or consumer data, right? Yeah. Today, we have tons and tons of consumer data, you know, platforms store consumer data, providers store consumer data. You have DMPs, which have uh, multiple strands of consumer data. In fact, if you want to paint a canvas of a particular person like you or me, you know, you, you, know, you can go and have mm -hmm. information which normally your, your closest relatives or your loved ones may not know also about you, right? And... Yeah. Uh, and the internet also gives us a chance to be anonymous at the same time. So your actual real self actually comes on the internet. And there's a very beautiful book uh, mm -hmm. called Everybody Lies Written. Uh, and you should all read that in terms of the kind of, um, you know, searches people do um, when, when they are alone on Google, right? When nobody's watching. So you are a completely different self. So the data is the key here. And, and the platforms today, all the automation platforms thrive on that particular data. The more data you have, the better your automation will be and your better your targeting towards the moments of truth for every customer will be. So if a customer is outside, and I remember we did one campaign for ITC Ashivadata, and we were targeting people around Atta Chakkis in uh, okay. Punjab, in the northern of India, yeah. for the fact mm -hmm. that we wanted those people who are surfing the mobile phone or waiting for the Atta to be, you know, um, you know um, done in that Chakki, 
they should go back and look at you know um, maybe find an ad or doing you know surfing any kind of content find a ashiva data saying this is the healthier data rather than the regular chakki which is mixed you know so and so for unhygienic and you know things like those right so that was possible because we had the data of latitude and longitude of one that particular chakki the captive audience yeah. around it and third mm-hmm. is the customers who was actually you know surfing you know or using apps like google maps or you know youtube video or anything like that right so i think orchestration is only possible when you have these minute data points about the customer and any automation platform will help us you know get that uh, real time access to that data and superimpose with the customer behavior happening at that particular point of time it makes it so powerful and you know that's that's typically how we orchestrate any sort of marketing both either in the b2b or b2c i think the principles still remain the same rightly said viraja i would like to go directly to namrata for her point of view here uh, i agree with the point that data is really important and without data it would be really uh, you know difficult to understand any sort of customer journey and nowadays we have a lot of channels by which we can run data a lot of channels by which we can understand the data and a lot of channels where we can get data from any but i think segmentation of customer intention uh, channel by channel is really important because if if you are tracking the customer behavior from the data of social media it can be really uh, different from the intent of customer Uh, who is coming from SEO or who is coming from email marketing? So mapping intent, customer intent uh, with data and creating a storyline of complete customer behavior is something which can help us better in making things more personalized and making things more, uh, you know, uh, as I said, just it, it can help us in getting that just for me marketing. so yeah segmentation of data by mapping mm-hmm. it with customer behavior right and it's something that can be very helpful okay the correct number yeah. number and now i would like to request devyani um uh, i think uh, covered it all by the panelists mm-hmm. no more points to add okay no problem what do you open up Okay so now i think we are almost uh, in the end of this webinar so i think we are we have talked about everything customer journey orchestration everything we have talked about now i just wanted to discuss this with each one of you since this is the most important thing what uh, uh, business in the end want so my last question will be how to map your customers journey path to conversion so uh, biraja if you can start come again please open the question again sorry question is how to map your customers journey path to conversion the end goal well it's a process as i said you know when there is okay. there is no set path again you know we we uh, we pl- we plan it's like man proposes god disposes right my customer is god so he will yes. choose when and how to interact with a particular brand um you know and we have to be sort of there at every point of time and when and when the customer seeks little bit of information wants to interact with the brand tries to confirm any kind of information or facts uh, around us uh, you know show most probably a little bit of brand love by posting or tweeting or something around uh, something that he or she likes about the particular brand um, you know you know it it's there is no set path as i said you know that's that's my reading of this whole uh, customer journey i think automation tools give us a lot of power and flexibility uh, to you know map all these small 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 areas and points where the customer is interacting with us throughout the day i remember you know old agency days we used to have a life of a day of a customer uh, when we were planning okay. for unilever or png and we used to basically chart out saying this is a girl who is 24 years old and most probably like to use the ponds you know face wash or the cream that we are launching right and this is the day in her life and how what's the intervention points and today that's not possible right because yeah. you have so much you have you have the smartphone in your pocket you are um, looking at outdoor billboards while going in a um, you know particular bus or a you know um, or there in a train station you know watching at something couple of ads here and there or you're reading a magazine you know there are multiple touch points out there so there is no single path i think it's sort of you have to cast a net and the mm-hmm. net will have to have that kind of ability through using automation tools saying that if i find a customer at x point 
let me go with this particular intervention because the context is different. And if I have the customer, the same customer at point Y, the context is very different. Let me have a different intervention, right? So, you know, yeah. I, I think that's that's something that we should take out um, from from um, you know whatever we're trying to do from automation standpoint. You have to cover all the bases, as they say. Understood. Yeah, Namrata, if you want to add something. Yeah, I think uh, the path uh, the path could be the unified marketing strategy that we okay. derive from customer mapping. Uh, so whatever we do, what kind of uh, you know what whatever we are trying to achieve through customer mapping and trying to understand customer behavior, their intention, everything, uh, making. Uh, Making a kind of making a kind of uh, unified marketing strategy, something that can help. Uh, wherein uh, you know a person who is seeing your brand on Instagram, then they are purchasing it, and then after purchasing it, uh, purchasing the product from you, they are facing a completely different kind of content. It's not going to work out in today's world. So developing a unified digital uh, marketing strategy from your customer mapping is something that could be the path for it. That's what I think. Got it, got it, Namrata. Uh, Sunesh, if you want to add something? Nothing really, uh, you know, nothing really, uh, you know, any, any, anything left, but uh, uh, see, I think, um, again, coming from a B2B perspective, uh, yeah. there's a lot of interesting, uh, you know, intent-based platforms uh, which are available these days, which help you uh, more with more focused uh, you know, uh, 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 context to your customers and help you orchestrate your journey better. So, uh, you know, when, when, if I can get intent data, the person is actually looking for a software like, uh, I mean, if I'm, if I'm like selling software, and if I get to know that this guy is actually looking, he's searching for software like mine, then I know I can, you know, share more relevant data. And, you know, uh, uh, let's say if I can also, uh, these days you can also get to understand the technology stack that guy is. So, let's say if, if I know that that guy is using X and I have Y to sell, I know I can send him a comparison document of Y is, y is y better than X. And so on. This is how uh, automation is changing the, uh, you know, customer, uh, you know, uh, journey of station. And it's only making it uh, uh, more, uh, uh, you know, focused and uh, uh, relevant for the customer. Uh, at, sometimes at the cost, if not done well, sometimes at the cost of freaking him out as well. Because if he realizes that was, uh, why is it that he has so much information about me? Uh, so that also has to be done very smartly. Uh, but yeah, broadly, these are the things which I have Understood. Uh, Divyani, if you want to add anything from your experience in the past. Uh, yeah. So, the, like, just reiterating the question, uh, mapping the customer journey to conversion. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll share my opinion with respect to B2C. Uh, okay. Identify a business goal. Okay. And, and make sure you are very clear what you want the user to achieve. Whether you want the user to make the next transaction, whether you want the user to give a feedback or maybe a shout out on social media or do a purchase in a different category, be very clear on what's the business goal you want the user to achieve. Then do set the people who will act upon um, it and do it with personalization. Use personalization variables like uh, based on you know their past behavior. Use their purchases details. Design. So it, it will give a better boost to your whole approach. Uh, then create experiences across different channels, but also keep a sweet spot, limit the touch points. Then to the after all, it's a uh, performance. So define um, like some wing and double down on the approach which works for a particular segment. I think this is the way I go about mapping the customer life cycle to the conversions I'm moving for. Understood, Divani. Now I would like to request Ankit to extend 
his point of view on stages of different customer journey in even for digital marketing. Over to you, Ankit. Hey, uh, thank you, Mekwala. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for adding a ton of points, which I could see uh, very much in deep. Uh, uh, everyone out here, we have discussed uh, uh, discussed from our speaker panel, and we could see uh, really, really uh, uh, very deep, not only vertical but horizontal, not only B two B and B two C, and uh, even all these uh, all these segments. Yes, we have explored all these all these detail and uh, and yes you all are right about the audiences which we also observe working with uh, with the different marketing operations team in different regions and for different businesses and uh, along the way we could see the new emergence of uh, the uh, new emergence of uh, whole of the stage or the buyer stage that is getting started right from the community and uh, again, the community play is also coming into the stages, into into the customer journey stages where we could see uh, in the community, whole of the mobile devices have taken leadership along with the mobile app that is buying, that is influencing your customers and buyers, not only on social media, but also on, on mobile devices community. So, uh, so if we see uh, where the game has started changing in last four years, where we could see a Facebook group came into uh, came into existence, and we could see rapid decline of LinkedIn groups. And now we could see a rapid sharp increase in in the groups like uh, segments where the buyer journey are starting right from the WhatsApp, where we could see uh, just from the limit of 250 to 500. Now now the limit out there in the groups. A lot of uh, discussions happen in groups. On Telegram, again, again, oh, we could see a lot of uh, community play happening in Discord. Again, a lot of community play happening again, and uh, and all the so so the, so if we could see the whole customer journey is not only starting on the first party data, but yes, on the third party data, or we could say dark social, it's, it's, it's still happening out there, uh, out there on Twitter spaces, Clubhouse spaces, and and a lot of various places. Uh, places where the discussions are happening and customer journey mapping uh, customers are, are coming right from these places so we could see uh, at several places wherever the marketers are engaging their audiences they are building the segments where they have come and according to those segment uh, those segment whole of the uh, whole of the customer journey is being built and and customers are getting engaged so that's that these are some of the new insights which i uh, i came across and thought of sharing with you uh, in recent past in last two or three years where we could see uh, penetration of mobile devices has taken a lot of change and a lot of leadership into customer behavior thank yep. you ankit Up to you, yeah thank you ankit for such an insightful uh, point of view I would like to thank you, thanks all of my panel member as well for such a wonderful discussion. And besides that, I would like to thank our two sponsors, Niche Marketers and Pitbull also. So Niche Marketers is a community of credible expert and expert marketers in India. Uh, website link will be given in the chat box. You can have a look on their website. And also we have Pitbull. For another one of our another sponsor, it is a digital marketing, digital transformation, customer experience, and data driven marketing company, which have headquarters in Bangalore, and it is having some work specialties like UX, UI consulting, web design, digital marketing analytics, digital transformation, and many more. Okay. So uh, thank you panel member for this super engaging session. I'm sure everyone must have learned a lot. Now I would like to add the idea that we are organizing this webinar on a weekly basis every Thursday 5 p.m. Uh, for this entire month. On 14th of July, we have planned for another crucial topic that is financial goal setting and measurement for B2B marketers. So I'll be providing the link in chat box so you can go and register we also have made a whatsapp group where we do give update about webinar topics so if you are interested you can join the group as well we will also put this webinar on our youtube channel aritech so please do like share and subscribe to our channel for the recorded version of the webinar thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you so much
Thank you, guys. Thank Pleasure you. to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.